Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to Auto Line Daily. I'm Drew Winter from Ward's Auto, filling in for John today. And now on to the latest auto news. The two largest drawbacks to battery-assisted vehicles, besides range, is the weight and space the batteries take up. But what if the body panels of a car were actually the battery? The folks over at Volvo teamed up with other major participants as part of a European Union-funded research project to develop the technology. It took three and a half years to research and develop the batteries, which consist of structural supercapacitors integrated within a nanomaterial that's a combination of carbon fiber and a polymer resin. Supercapacitors can be discharged and recharged much faster than a conventional battery and also have a greater tolerance to do so numerous times. The system uses regenerative braking or an electrical outlet to charge the batteries and this panel seen here is powerful enough to supply energy to the car's entire 12 volt electrical system. There's no word on how much these panels cost, but we can sure bet they are expensive. And speaking of EVs, Nissan unveiled an updated version of its electric Delta Wing race car. The company showed off a version earlier this year, but the new model features updates to its styling, aerodynamics, as well as new cooling inlets. The car, which is officially called the Ziad RC, uses the same battery technology as the Nissan LEAF and is also equipped with a turbocharged engine. The Ziad RC is able to reach speeds in excess of 185 miles per hour or 300 kilometers an hour. It will race next year at Le Mans and will serve as a testbed for Nissan's LMP1 program. As you know, John is in China covering the Global Automotive Forum. Here he is with the latest news from the conference. We learned a couple of important developments at the Global Automotive Forum in Wuhan, China today. First, Jochen Heisman, the CEO of Volkswagen China, announced they're not going to do battery electric vehicles in China. Instead, they're going to offer plug-ins. And he said they're going to offer a plug-in in every single segment of the market, first starting with the plug-in, Porsche Panamera. He also said that because China's looking at cleaning up diesel fuel here, he thinks there's a chance of selling diesels for passenger cars in the Chinese market, something that's not happening now. Also, Li Shu Fu, the chairman of Geely, announced that they are going to have, with Volvo, a fully autonomous car in 2020. It's going to be developed by Volvo, but as he pointed out, Geely now owns 100% of all of Volvo's intellectual property that's how they're going to get the job done. For Autoline Daily in Wuhan, China, I'm John McElroy. Dodge unveiled the Durango Special Service Edition, which will be available for police and fire departments as well as fleet customers. It's available with the same powertrain as the regular Durango, the Pentastar 3.6 liter v, uh, V6, or the 5.7 liter Hemi V8, which are mated to an eight-speed automatic. The special service model's unique features include a heavy-duty brake package, heavy-duty battery, a larger output alternator, heavy-duty water pump, and engine oil cooler, and a load leveling suspension. The third row of seats also is removed to create more cargo room. Production of the Durango special service model starts at the end of the year. Honda expects to export more vehicles from North America than it imports next year. According to Columbus Business First, the company exported around 90,000 vehicles built in North America in 2012 and plans to increase that to more than 200,000 cars annually in the next few years. Close to 90% of Hondas and Acuras sold in North America are built in the region. And we would like to thank S2000 underscore Moose for sending us this story via Twitter. And if you don't already, you can follow Autoline at twitter.com slash Autoline. Coming up next, a peek into the design of the Porsche 918 Spyder. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. 
Last month, John visited the Frankfurt Motor Show, and while he was there, he caught up with Michael Maurer, the head of Porsche Design, to discuss the 918 Spider. In the following Autoline This Week clip, Michael explains the goals the company had when developing the car. This 918 project is basically for a design on this once-in-a-lifetime project. Three years ago, we just did a concept car. Doing a concept car for a designer, you have all the freedom, so that was a dream job. Seeing the car three years later as a production car, which basically has not changed from the concept, I mean, this is a dream for a designer that comes true. That's got to be, because clearly when you do a concept car, you can do whatever you want, but to manufacture it, sometimes compromises have to be made. You must have been thinking about the manufacturing part as you did the concept car. Yeah, I mean, when we did the concept car, uh, at Porsche we always take into consideration that it could become a production car. So we had a lot of freedom but not unlimited freedom. So we always thought about if it becomes a concept car we have to be very close to reality in order to have minimal changes for the production version. Michael, tell us a little bit about this because this car has brilliant performance. It's unbelievable unlike anything Porsche has done before. Yeah, I mean, uh, for us it was at that time when the idea started. A lot of people questioned the future of sports cars and of the Porsche brand becoming part of the concern, Volkswagen concern. With this car we wanted to show there is no contradiction between env environmental thinking and sports cars. So the task was very clear to come up with the concept and for a designer we had the job to visualize this. Uh, let's say, combination of uh, contradiction that everybody believed you can't bring together. Also joining John for that show are designers and executives from Jaguar, Infiniti, BMW, and Mazda. And as always, you can watch the entire episode of AutoLine this week right now at our website, autoline.tv. But that's it for today's show. Once again, I'm Drew Winter from Wards Auto. Check out the latest issue of Wards Auto Digital Magazine at wardsauto.com, where we talk about all the technology first on the Mercedes S Class. Thanks for watching and have a great weekend. Wards is the industry leader for news, data, and analysis. That's why companies across the globe subscribe to our premium service, maybe even your own. Log in for subscriber access now. Check your company's intranet for details and rely on wardsauto.com to keep you informed.